Hello again, everybody. I'm Radu Horoyu, Professional Service Engineer at Infinite Wireless. Thank you very much for joining the webinar. Today you will meet our technical support team and uh, I will show you how to use our new Service Desk platform. Uh, the agenda includes five items. Uh, first, I will introduce you to our tech support team members so uh, you can know a bit more about the guys that uh, will help you solve the technical issues within your uh, Infinite Wireless networks. Then uh, I will show you how to create a support request via email. In the third item, uh, I will explain all about our new service desk platform. I will show you how it works, what types of requests you can make and uh, how you can get a full service desk account. And in the last two items, I will present two very interesting features that uh, we are going to release soon. The possibility to receive the factory uh, reset password automatically without the need of uh, getting into contact with uh, one of the support team members. And uh, the ability to create support requests directly from uh, an Infinite Devices web interface. So to begin, uh, let's meet the tech support team members. Uh, Alexander Kozlenko is uh, a former lead engineer for the largest ISP in Russia called Rostelecom. Uh, he speaks Russian and English and he has a Juniper Network certification. The next team member is uh, Igor Demchuk, which uh, previously worked as a lead engineer for a Russian ISP called Planeta. Uh, he also speaks both Russian and English and he will uh, also be online today to answer some uh, of your questions in the end, which uh, I am sure there will be plenty. Then we have uh, Ludovic Takam, which uh, has experience from uh, working as a support engineer for one of the largest uh, Russian wireless ISPs called uh, Enforta. Uh, besides Russian and English, he also speaks French. Next up is uh, Alexander Bernikov. Uh, he is a former lead engineer at Microtest, which is a Russian service integrator. He speaks uh, Russian, English and Japanese and he has uh, multiple uh, certifications including Cisco CCNP and CCDP. And finally, the head of our technical support is uh, Andrei Zaguzin. Previously, he has been in charge of the data networks department at Skylink, which is a uh, Russian mobile operator. Uh, now that you've met the team, it's time to see how you can send them requests for support. Uh, the most common way is to simply send an email to support at infinitewireless.com and uh, describe the request inside the email body. So nothing special, probably most of you um, have uh, done this at some point. Uh, if necessary, you can also attach files like diagnostic cards or configuration screenshots. Uh, shortly after um, you have sent the email, you will receive an automatic reply informing you that your request has been acknowledged and uh, that someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. Uh, all our responses will be sent to you as email notifications as well. You will see that the notifications will come from special email addresses that also include the IDs of the requests in their names. So please forward any additional information to these addresses or keep them in the loop so uh, all the request history can be tracked by our system. Uh, instead of sending emails to support to receive assistance, you can use a more efficient tool, namely our uh, Service Desk platform which uh, you can find in the R Services section of our website uh, www.infinitewireless.com or directly at sd.infinitewireless.com. The Infinite Service Desk is a centralized system that aims to gather all types of requests received from our customers, uh, from incident reports, health requests to consultation requests. Uh, it can incorporate everything from basic configuration assistance to service requests for complex projects. Uh, our service desk system is provided by the uh, Atlassian suite of integrated components which uh, facilitate our tech support team to work, edit and uh, collaborate on issues, attach files and screenshots to, to issues, uh, track their work, keep on top of SLA, set up dashboards and uh, raise requests on behalf of customers.
The access to the service desk platform is allowed only for the registered users. So uh, in case you don't have an account yet, you can click on the sign up for an account link and uh, provide the requested info like email, password and full name. Uh, the newly created account will automatically be a guest account. Uh, the guest account only has access to the support request component. So in guest mode, you can only create a generic service desk case by clicking on a support request. Uh, this action is equivalent uh, with sending an email to support like uh, I showed you earlier. Uh, you will be asked to fill in the required information in the web form that you can see on the screen right now. Um, the request summary is mandatory. A detailed description of the issue is optional, but it is recommended that you provide it to help the support engineers better understand your issue. You can attach relevant files like screenshots or diagnostic cards. Uh, the unit serial numbers can be provided if applicable. And um, then you must click the create button to submit the request. Uh, in case further information will be required, a tech support engineer will request it from you and uh, he will be in contact with you until the case is solved. If you are already an Infinite Wireless customer, you can also obtain a full service desk account or a customer account as it is called from uh, our sales team or from the tech support team. Uh, the customer account grants access to all the service desk components uh, as you can see in the screenshot. I will give you more details about each component in the following slides. Uh, and I also want to mention that uh, both the guest and customer accounts are uh, free to use. Right, so uh, the first service desk component that uh, you can access if you have a customer account is called the technical issues and uh, as the name suggests it is used to report any kind of technical problems encountered within your wireless network. The um, web form that uh, you must fill in is uh, identical with the one of the support request component from the guest account. Uh, of course, besides the summary and description, you can also attach relevant files that support your, your inquiry and uh, specify the serial numbers of the units. Among other files like screenshots, diagrams, etc., uh, the diagnostic cards generated from each unit involved in the case are mandatory for a quick and accurate resolution from uh, our tech support team. Uh, right after pressing the create button at the bottom of the form, the request is registered into our system and uh, you will receive an automatic reply via email with the reference number assigned to the case, just like with the simple email request that I have showed you earlier. Uh, the next uh, service desk component is the factory password request. Um, all you have to do in case you forgot your password is to simply fill in the serial number of the unit in question and then um, uh, click the create button at the bottom of the form. This will send your request to our tech support team which uh, shortly thereafter will send you the requested factory password at the, the registered email address. A license request is another useful component of our service desk platform. Uh, but first, uh, a bit of information about licenses. Uh, so the Infinite Wireless products offer high flexibility in terms of licensing. So by simply uploading a new license file generated for uh, the users, uh, the units, sorry, the unit serial number, you can uh, upgrade the capacity of uh, the Infilink 2x2 Lite units or Infiman 2x2 CPEs from 8 megabits per second to 20 to 50 or to the maximum of uh, 180 megabits per second. Uh, you can uh, upgrade the capacity of the Infiman 2x2 SMNB base stations from uh, 40 megabits per second to the maximum of uh, 150 megabits per second. Uh, you can enable the Infiman 2x2 CPEs to operate uh, as Infilink 2x2 Lite master units so that you can create point-to-point, -point, uh, for example, a point-to-point -point link between two CPEs. Um, you can uh, you can enable the Infilink 2x2 Pro units to operate as Infiman 2x2 base stations, uh, so you can allow more than one slave to connect to a master unit. Uh, you can change the default frequency range of an Infinite device, 
or uh, you can eliminate the transmit power limitation. For example, if uh, an obsolete uh, 63 milliwatt device was approved for RMA, the customer will receive from Infinite a new device model with uh, 300 milliwatts as a replacement, but that replacement unit will be limited to 63 milliwatts by license. So this limitation can be removed by applying a license upgrade. Uh, and for more uh, details about licenses, including prices, please contact the Infinite uh, Business Developer from your region. So, uh, in the license request web form, you will have to fill in the serial numbers of the Infinite units in question. The description field is optional, but it is recommended to fill that in as well, indicating the parameters that you want to change or upgrade. Also, you can attach a purchase order in, ca in case of uh, paid licenses. Uh, and after submitting the license request to our tech support team, you will receive an email with uh, the new license files, which you can um, uh, which can be uploaded then to your devices. Uh, for paid licenses, this might take a bit longer because uh, our financial department has to check the purchase order and approve the issuing of the new license. Next, uh, the consultation category is uh, dedicated to additional requests like recommended topologies and configurations, regulatory and compliance information, network and uh, RF planning, best practices and so on. Uh, initially, you should provide us with the basic information about your inquiry by filling in the description field and uh, you can also attach relevant documents as well. Uh, after submitting the consultation requests, our pre-sales team will uh, contact you via email and uh, together you will be able to establish the best course of action with regard to your projects. And finally, the last service desk item is the return material authorization. Uh, although the mean time between failures of the infinite units is around 150,000 hours, in the unfortunate event when an infinite wireless device might have a hardware fault, regardless if it is still under warranty or not, uh, you should fill in this RMA form. Our tech support team will contact you shortly afterwards via email and uh, you will be guided through each of the RMA procedure steps from the initial investigation to the RMA approval. Uh, <clears throat> by using the Service Desk platform, you will have access to your entire request history. Um, you can view all cases that you were involved in or uh, list them by company. You will have access to other people's requests as long as they work in the same company as you do. Uh, of course, you can also filter the requests by status and type. Uh, by clicking on any of the requests, you will open the request page, which uh, allows you to view or add comments, and you can also share the request with uh, any other user of uh, our service desk uh, platform. Uh, moving on to the last part of today's presentation, which includes two useful support-related features that uh, will be available soon. Uh, the first one is the automatic release of the factory passwords. So uh, if you tend to forget your passwords frequently, it's good to know that uh, you will be able to obtain the factory codes more quickly and easily. Basically, the password request cases will be handled automatically by our system, like uh, in the example shown in, the, in this slide. Uh, the feature is in the beta stage at the moment, so please ask us if you want to test it. And uh, the second upcoming support related feature that uh, I want to show you is the possibility to create requests directly from an infinite uh, device's web interface. Most probably it will be released during Q3 this year and uh, the great thing about it is that the diagnostic card will be automatically collected from the unit and, and uh, attached to the request. Uh, this will save you the trouble of uh, having the, to extract the files yourself and then attach them to your request, thus making the whole process a lot faster. Of course, uh, you have to keep in mind that uh, this feature will only work if the computer that you are using to log into the Infinite device has internet connectivity, just like with the uh, firmware upgrades, for example. And uh, with that said, we have arrived at the end of today's webinar. 
Uh, now, uh, as always, we will have a Q&A session. So uh, if you have any questions, please write them down in the chat section and uh, I uh, will be more than happy to answer them. And um, my colleague from support, uh, Igor, will be, will be here to, to assist me with some of the, the questions as well. Thank you. So, uh, Sid, Adu, I see that uh, you have missed about half of the presentation. Uh, the presentation along with the recording of this session will be sent to, to everybody that uh, has, uh, has subscribed to, to our webinars. And um, yeah, you will be able to, to watch it afterwards, look on the presentation. You will have the materials sent along with the, with the thank you letter, uh, most probably tomorrow. So no problem if you missed a uh, part or the whole session, you, you will be able to uh, re-watch it to, to have access to both the recording and the presentation afterwards. A uh, question from uh, Matthew Meyer. Uh, I, I'm a final user. Do I have access to any of this? Yes, uh, any user uh, can have access to any user of Infinite uh, products can have access to, to our service desk platform. Uh, first you uh, can create a guest account yourself and then uh, send a request, uh, a simple support request to our team and uh, they, they will be able to grant you access to the whole uh, platform, to all the components of the, the service desk. Okay, so again, uh, see that do, I see that uh, you didn't get my, my answer. Uh, yeah, you will, if you have a bad internet connection and you cannot see the session live, you will, um, you will receive it via email along with the thank you letter probably tomorrow and uh, you will have access to the YouTube recording and, uh, um, and the, the presentation will be sent to you as well. So you will, you will be able to watch it tomorrow or some other time when, uh, when you want. Uh, all right, so um, next question. Uh, the request from a device web interface will be applied for all devices by upgrading their firmware. Uh, yes, you probably you will, will have to, to upgrade the devices to the latest firmware version. Uh, as with uh, our, most of our other features, um, they will work only with, uh, with the latest firmware. So uh, yeah, first you will have to upgrade all your devices to the, to the, the latest, latest firmware and then you will be able to have access to, to this new feature, to be able to send a request directly from the web interface. Uh, next question, can support provide pre-sales information? Uh, yes, uh, as I mentioned during the session, uh, by using the, the consultation uh, uh, component of the, the service desk, those consultation uh, requests go automatically to our pre-sales team and uh, they will contact you afterwards and you will discuss with them um, about uh, what, what you want to do, what information you, you need from them. Uh, next question for um, removing the limitation from uh, 63 milliwatts to 300 milliwatts um, I don't have this information if it costs anything or not. Uh, you will have to contact uh, your business developer from your region to, to ask him about this information. Um, next question, how do I upgrade from a guest user in the service desk portal? Uh, so as I mentioned uh, during the session as well, uh, you will simply have to ask the, the sales team or the support team so it's uh, it's enough to send a support request for example asking just this I want to upgrade my account from guest my service desk account from guest to full and uh, from then on you will uh, you will discuss with them uh, about this uh, and we have another question please repeat how to restore passwords for your devices automatically so uh, you you do the same thing as before you uh, either send an email requesting the password or uh, complete the request password form and then um, uh, in case the 
automatic release is applicable for you, uh, the, the password will be released automatically. So basically what, what uh, this feature does is it handles the, the cases, the password request cases are handled automatically by our system. So uh, it will be a, a bit quicker than uh, requesting the password from, uh, from one of the support team members. Yeah, so uh, as my colleague Igor said, uh, uh, if the serial number uh, matches your company, so uh, the company which bought the device, then uh, the password will be issued automatically. So basically this, this is the condition that uh, needs to be met. <laughs> yeah, so regarding the, um, the upgrade from 63 milliwatts to 300 milliwatts, yeah, th this is applicable only for new units that uh, support 300 milliwatts by hardware. The old units that uh, are 63 milliwatts max, those obviously you cannot upgrade. It, it was uh, just an example for the case when you have an old unit that's broken and uh, you uh, get an RMA approval. Uh, you get a, a new unit from Infinite that obviously has 300 milliwatts because uh, the 63 milliwatt units are obsolete. They are not produced anymore. And um, yeah, this is uh, the situation when you you can do the upgrade from 63, which is limited by license, to 300, which is the maximum for, for that unit. Okay. Uh, the next request, please share the, the support link again. So, uh, st.infinitewireless.com <coughs> This is the, the address which you can uh, use to, to access our service this platform. Alright, so next question uh, from Fouad related to the product road, roadmap yeah as Igor said we don't have plans to uh, have two uh, images uh, on a unit and uh, for you to, to be able to select uh, one of those images from the configuration GUI <clears throat> another question uh, what is the new firmware version uh, so for the the polling uh, firmware version uh, of the R5000 units, I think it's uh, 190.30, the, the last version, but uh, I think my colleague uh, Igor will be able to, to provide a more accurate answer. <coughs> yeah, and, uh, as Igor uh, replied in the chat section, you will find all of our latest uh, firmware files uh, on our FTP server. You have the, the link in the chat. Okay, so uh, regarding the firmware, Matthew, um, you will be able to, to see the, the beta firmware as well in the web interface. So now the, um, the full uh, version, let's say the final version of the software is uh, 190.30 that you can see, but if you click uh, check latest beta, then you will uh, be able to upgrade to 190.31 because uh, we constantly um, release new beta beta firmware versions um, to to test new features all the time, and uh, you can uh, you can use the the beta as well to. Um, to test new features, to see what's new, and uh, if it doesn't work for you, or if there are bugs, you can uh, revert to the previous, more stable version. <coughs> yeah, so um, about uh, Fouad's question earlier about two software versions on the same unit uh, that you can switch in between, uh, yeah, th this would be, as, as Igor said, uh, it would be very inefficient, it would be a waste of, uh, an un unnecessary waste of resources for, uh, for our equipment. So uh, this is the main reason why we probably won't uh, implement this feature.
about Matthew's question, uh, which uh, version is recommended, the beta or the stable version? It uh, really depends on your network, on uh, um, how how critical are your links, for example. So in most cases, I guess the stable version is uh, is more recommended, but. Uh, if you want to try new features, you can uh, use the beta as well, maybe for some uh, some links that you have easy access to, and you can go there and uh, fix it if uh, if any issue occurs. There is still one more request from Sida Do. Yeah, you if you want to propose that you that we use another platform? Yeah, we we have searched uh, a lot for. Um, for this webinar platform so this is uh, the best that uh, we could find so far and uh, yeah we'll uh, we will probably stick to it for a while at least for the the near future but uh, we will think about it so uh, yeah thank you thank you for bringing that up it will be it would be useful yeah having uh, um, on the go access like uh, with uh, whatsapp we will uh, definitely take a note of this and uh, think about it in the future. <laughs> right, so uh, thanks again everybody, thank you for your time and uh, I hope to see you again during uh, the next webinar which will be next month. Thank you.